my name is Allie and I work at the Kansas City Public Library. I'm here today to do something amazing and totally out of this world. We're going to be doing Doctor Who yoga and this is all part of our fandom yoga series. Are you ready to get started? Alright, so what you will need is hopefully a yoga mat, but if you have um, just kind of a, a floor that's not too slippery or even carpet will work just fine, that is okay. And I'm going to be using my TARDIS, which is a yoga block today, but if you don't have a yoga block, you can always use something like a couple of books uh, that are pretty thick or um, any kind of solid box, you know, if you've got a wooden box or something that would be great. But this is what I'm going to be using and I will be calling this my TARDIS. And um, also make sure that your doctor gives you the thumbs up to do any kind of physical exercise uh, before you do this video. All right, let's get started. We're gonna start off sitting with our legs bent, our knees bent, and we're gonna start off in Davros pose. So Davros, we know, is the leader of the Daleks, the creator of the Daleks, and he has this third eyeball right here, right? Super evil. And we're gonna sit up straight and tall, place both hands in a circle position as if you were creating your eyeball, and then I want you to close your two human eyes for three breaths. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. One more. All right, take the arms out wide and place them on the knees. We're getting ready for swirling galaxy pose. So switch the cross of your legs and spread them out just a little bit. And um, swirling galaxy pose feels a little weird, but just roll with me. So what we're gonna do is lean forward, bending the elbows, and we're just gonna be swirling slowly like a galaxy. Bonus points if you can make your breath match the spinning. So breathe in for one circle, breathe out for the next. Awesome. Okay, one more spin and then we're gonna switch directions. Ready? Switch directions. Breathe in and out. Swirling galaxy pose. Thinking of all the places the galaxy is the TARDIS travels in. Okay to a stop. We're going to turn and get ready for it's bigger on the inside pose. We're going to hug our knees to our chest thinking about the TARDIS, how small that phone booth looks on the outside. And then when you go on the inside, one, two, three, it's so much bigger. So here we are. We are transitioning into space titanic pose which is kind of like our, our yoga boat pose. So your legs are, are out. You can bend the knees, hands out to the side. If this is too much, just kind of put your hands behind you. And we're gonna do row, row, row your boat gently down the stream in your cheesiest Doctor Who voice. You might pick like which doctor you think would be most likely to sing this song. Okay, the next time that your left knee is bent, go ahead and lower those legs down. And then use your hands to kind of sit up. Um, we're gonna hug one knee in with our, or our lifted knee up with our right hand. Take our left hand behind us and look over the shoulder. We're coming into the master pose. And the master is notorious for switching sides. Sometimes he's on the doctor's side, sometimes he's not. And so we are twisting in this pose. All right, one, two, three. We're gonna turn forward and switch knees. Okay, take the left hand, hug that knee in, and the right hand comes behind you as you look over that right shoulder. Again, we're in the master pose. Which version of the master is your favorite? Because the master, like the doctor, is also a time lord generates. Three, two, one. Okay. Next we 
are coming into TARDIS traveling through the tunnel. Oh, so you know when you watch the TARDIS time traveling uh, through space and time, it kind of like spins and twirls all through this tunnel. So we are going to reenact that with their bodies just a little bit, and this is what it's going to look like. So give yourself a little bit of space. We're going to rock and roll three times, acting like you are traveling through space, and roll right over the knees, and we're getting ready to come into dinosaurs in space. Okay, so for dinosaurs in space pose, our fingers are spread wide, making our dinosaur feet very wide. Um, and our back is as straight as you can make it, okay? And we're gonna come into kind of like a brontosaurus, brachiosaurus kind of look. So we're gonna round the spine, and we're gonna take our left leg and make it into a tail, okay? So a dinosaur tail. And we're gonna take our right arm and lift it up. This is our dinosaur brontosaurus neck. I love the episode with the dinosaurs on the spaceship. That was like dinosaurs and spaceships all in one episode. I don't know how you can get any better than that. Three, two, one. We're going to take that arm down, bring the knee in, and let's do the other side. Take your right foot out, making it into a tail, and lift the left arm up, reaching our dinosaur mouth way up high. Dinosaurs in space. I feel like that could be its own spinoff, which I would love. All right, three, two, one. Take the hand down, the knee in, and this is where you want to have either your pile of books, your sturdy box. Maybe you can get by with this without anything. Some people can, but I like to have a block here. And I'm gonna put my TARDIS on its side right there. You can also have it a little taller and just see what's comfortable. What we're gonna do is take our right leg out to the side and then reach both hands up. We are a TARDIS opening its door. Take the left hand, place it on the block, and the right hand over to the side, stretching with the whole body. Three breaths. You should feel a really good stretch down your right arm and right side. All right, come back up. Bring your TARDIS with you. We're gonna place that on the other side. Put your other leg out. Stretch both arms up. Get ready to open the TARDIS doors. And here we go. Opening the TARDIS door pose. Can you imagine what it would be like to walk into the TARDIS? Even though we've seen it on screen so many times, I think it'd be amazing to actually be there. All right, bringing both hands back, we're actually gonna take our block and we're gonna sit on it. So you can take your books, your block, whatever it is, and come to a comfortable, as comfortable as you can position with your knees bent. And I don't even wanna tell you what this pose is yet because I don't want you to be afraid. This is. To me, the creepiest creature on Doctor Who. So, take the hands out wide, place them over the eyes. We are in weeping angel pose. Keep the spine straight. Three breaths. Okay, now after this next breath, we are going to uncover our eyes and make our creepiest weeping angel face. Three, two, one. <laughs> Creepy as all get out. And weeping angel pose particularly creeps me out because my husband actually got us a weeping angel Christmas tree topper. And so now every time I'm in the living room at Christmas time, it's not like warm fuzzy like it should be. It's really creepy. All right, you can take that block and put that over there. We'll leave that for a little while. We're gonna turn and we're gonna come into another terrible creature pose and this is Dalek pose. Exterminate, exterminate, 
And if you want, you can kind of walk those dialect -like feet a little bit to stretch the backs of your muscles on your calves and your thighs. Take your hands, make sure that they are wide like starfish. And we're gonna get ready and lift the Dalek's gun. So we're gonna lift up our right foot straight back. So we're not gonna open it. We're just gonna lift it straight back. We've got our gun pointed. We're looking for the doctor. And I want you to say on the count of three in your best Dalek voice, exterminate. One, two, three, exterminate. Okay, put that right foot back down. And we're gonna bring that right foot all the way forward so that the knee is bent and the ankle is just a little bit in front of or right under the knee. Um, drop that back knee down to the floor and bring your hands up. Any Captain Jack fans, we're coming into Captain Jack's open heart pose. So what I'd like you to do is place your hands on Captain Jack's heart and bring the arms out wide because Captain Jack can love anyone. It's like his superpower. And he lives his life not by like Doctor Who morals, but by his heart and his emotions. All right, take the hands back, place them on the floor, curl that back foot, lift your knee, and we're gonna go back to our Dalek dar pose. Almost a Dalek or garlic. <laughs> okay, get ready. We see the doctor. Lift your left leg up and. On the count of three, we're gonna say exterminate. One, two, three. Exterminate, exterminate, doctor. And place that foot back down. We're gonna bring that foot all the way up, just like we did before. We're gonna come into Captain Jack pose again. So lower that right knee. You can uncurl the legs, bring your hands off the ground, place them over the heart. And on the count of three, we're going to bring our arms wide and open up our hearts. One, two, three. Captain Jack pose. And if you're a huge Captain Jack fan, you might want to know that there is a show, I think it's called Torchwood, and I haven't seen it, but it is about that character. A little spinoff. Okay, take the hands and place them down on the floor. We're going to curl that back foot. Bring the knee up. We're back in Dalek pose. And on the count of three, we're gonna jump our feet forward. One, two, three. Jump forward in time. And then come all the way to standing. Okay, and I'm gonna come to stand so that you can see me a little better right here. Actually, I think I'll skew back a little bit. And we are going to come into double moon pose. How many planets have we seen more than one moon, right? Um, Earth only has one, but many planets that the doctor visits have two. So we're going to stand with our feet fairly close together and pretend you have a string on the top of your head and it goes all the way down through your spine and pull that string up. Okay, bring both hands up to your head and we're going to lean over to the right. This is our first moon making our moon pose here, we're stretching. And you know, it's not necessarily better to go further over. You just wanna get a good side stretch on that side. This is my left side. Three, two, one. All right, we're gonna do the other moons. We're gonna go to the other side. Double moon pose. Three, two, one. All right, coming to stand. Um, Next, we're going to bring our feet just a little bit far apart, and we are going to be in spinning TARDIS pose. So for this pose, you want your arms really loose, okay? So kind of like Raggedy Ann style. And what you're going to do is fling your arms, like sandbags, around in circles. And this should be a really good feeling stretch for your back. This is like one of my favorite ways to pop my back, actually. Although yours may not pop. All right, three, two, one, and we've landed. Okay, so I'm going to come to the front of my mat and place my hand on both of my Time Lord hearts, because we know Time Lords have two hearts. So place one hand, two hands on your heart, 
I want you to take a moment to catch your breath. We're gonna do three breaths. Bend that uh, left knee, 
arms up. Get ready for a sonic screwdriver on this side. And three, two, one, straighten that leg. Now we're gonna turn both feet so that they're facing forward, okay? Then we're gonna take the right foot and point it that direction, okay? So, hands out straight. We're getting ready for regeneration pose, okay? So we know at the end of every Time Lord's life, I guess you would call it, they regenerate. So, hands all the way up, okay? Now take them down. We're gonna slide. We are one doctor right now, looking up at our hand. This is the last few moments of this doctor's life, sort of. And we're gonna come all the way back up, flip flop the feet, we're turning the gears, and then we're turning time, and we're turning into the next doctor. Who will we be this time? What do you guys think of the newest doctor? I love her. I think she's awesome. All right, take both arms back up. We've just regenerated. We are now getting ready for time and space pose. So we are coming into what most people know as warrior two. And I'm gonna grab my block for this. I'm actually gonna put that right in front of my mat. So go ahead and do that. Grab your block or your books, your, your TARDIS. And we are spreading the arms out wide. So this is space and time pose. We are in space right now, We're taking up lots of space. Arms are wide, knees bent, and now we're gonna flip the gears and go through time. So take this back foot, slowly shift it forward, and we're gonna turn. Might make my block a little taller. This takes a lot of balance, but we're turning. Our hand is up, our foot is off the ground traveling through time now. Awesome. And it's okay if your foot falls, that's totally normal. If it does, just rest it on the ground for a second and you'll go back up in the air. All right, take your feet down if you haven't already. We're gonna come into space pose again. So taking up lots of space, arms are wide, this other knee is bent. And on the count of three, we're going into time pose. Three, two, one. Take that back foot, step it up, and placing one hand on your block or pile of books or piece of furniture, see if you can balance on one foot. Traveling through time. Three, two, one. We're coming down. All right, so feet are staying wide. You're getting ready to come into our last hard pose. After this, we're gonna be sitting down for the rest of the time. And this is the time rotor, which is that thing in the center of the, the TARDIS console that goes up and down, okay? So we're gonna take our hands, and as we bring our hands down, we're gonna bend our knees. We're gonna come down. So act like the doctor, we are taking our TARDIS through time, and we're gonna go up and down as we go through time, okay? And it always makes that like sound, right? I can't even make the sound, I'm not good at sound effects, but just imagine the sound as the TARDIS is flying through space. Straighten the legs and let's take a seat. Many of you know about the character River Song, who I love, she's maybe my favorite character. We are coming into River Song's journal pose. And her journal looks like a TARDIS. It has um, a record of all of the times she has encountered the doctor throughout time. So first, let's close our book. And then let's open it. As we open it, we're gonna straighten the back, grab our feet, and lean forward just a little bit, keeping our back straight. So we don't wanna damage the spine of the journal. And we're gonna read the journal and find out what is it we need to remember. When are we gonna see the doctor next? Where will we see him next? And the most important thing we need to say is spoilers, because we don't wanna spoil anything. That's like one of the most, I don't know, 
one of the most common or well-known things that River Song says is spoilers. And the other thing is, hello, sweetie, and blows a kiss, right? She even writes that on the walls to leave clues throughout time. Okay, sit back up, and we're gonna come into another type of River Song pose, and this is Baby Melody Pond, because we know, maybe we know, that River Song was born Melody Pond, right? And she was the daughter of Rory and Amy Pond. And so we're imagining Melody Pond as a happy baby, and we're rolling back and forth on our backs, grabbing our feet like a baby, our knees are bent, going through space. And Melody Pond was conceived while the TARDIS was flying through space and time. And so she actually has some of the powers of a time warp, which is pretty cool. All right, bring the feet together. We're gonna stretch them all the way out. Bring the hands overhead and we're coming into sonic screwdriver pose. So we're making our body into the shape of a sonic screwdriver. And we're stretching, stretching, stretching. Three, two, one, and let everything loose. Close the eyes. We're gonna take just a few moments here. And then catch our breath. Let's do three big breaths together. through the mouth. Breathe in through the nose. Out through the mouth. One more breath. Now that we've kind of calmed down our breathing a little bit, keep the eyes closed for a moment longer. And imagine that you are flying through space and time in the nervous. You are the doctor's new companion. It's the first time you've been in the TARDIS. The doctor opens the doors in the middle of space just so you can see it. Just so you can see a star being born or some other marvelous sight that the doctor has picked out just for you, for you to witness. And it's the most beautiful thing